Praise be Jesus and Mary. I like to thank God for the blessing and the honor to be in this temple with all of you this evening. And I like to thank Father Tony for welcoming me here in his parish and, and all the people that have been working for me to be here in Northern Ireland. Um, I'm going to share with you a um, reflection um, guided by the Spirit, uh, and I'm going to start with uh, a reading of the words. And I read to you from the second letter of St. Peter, uh, chapter 1, from verse 3 on. The Christian's call and election. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises that through these you may escape from the corruption that is in this world because of passion and become partakers of the divine nature. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these things are yours and abound, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. For whoever lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be the more zealous to confirm your call and election, for if you do this, you will never fall. So there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these things, though you know them and are established in the truth that you have. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to arouse you by way of reminder, since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me, and I will see to it that after my departure you may be able at any time to recall these things. The Word of the Lord. So we live by the inheritance of Jesus through the apostles and through all the saints throughout Christianity, and we are the fruits of this journey. Today we are celebrating a great saint and doctor of the church, and, and all of these um, testimonies and, and uh, powerful lives that were lived in faith and trusting in God it gives us hope and gives us the understanding of our faith. And, and above all, the responsibility we have as Catholics. Um, I, am, I was a lapsed Catholic, as you many know, uh, for 33 years. And, and I came back into the faith uh, in a very dramatic fashion while I was captured by the rebels in Colombia in the jungle. And uh, the Lord appeared to me uh, through an ecstasy in the jungle, and that's how I came back into the church. Uh, and uh, I am an actor and a composer, and uh, uh, at 47 years of age is when I had the experience with the Lord. And uh, two years after I was released from captivity, captivity miraculously, I walked away from my artistic career and became a lay Catholic missionary. This is what I have been doing for 25 years. And uh, one thing I know, and it is that all of the years I lived away from the church, I never 
remember the church in all of those years. And uh, I passed by many Catholic churches throughout the world in my trips and in the city of Los Angeles where I lived, there were many churches, but I had never an attraction to the church. It was like dead in my life. Uh, once I came back into the faith because the Lord rescued me, the churches became alive and it became like an amazing uh, a fountain of joy and hope and peace and uh, uh, such an incredible place of, uh, of redemption for my heart and also uh, the means of reparation for so many years of being away from God, living a sinful life. And then little by little through my missionary life, I began to enter into this mystic of the mission that we have, the mission God entrusted all of us to fulfill as Catholics, the responsibility we have to understand that we truly are a chosen people, that we truly are predestined and we truly are God's army. And I think that when we look at this world and we see how lost it is, how dark it is, uh, we understand the, the need uh, for us to be who we are supposed to be, who we were created to be, these beacons of light, these torches of light in the midst of this darkness. Uh, it's very easy to live our Catholic life just as a, as a religious culture, as a tradition, as a habit, and something that makes us feel good, something we do among many things we do, part of our lives. But uh, to become one with the church, one with the faith, and one with the mission is another thing, because that is like the real true calling of our living in this earth, which is to bring this real God that is alive in us through baptism in the Holy Spirit and bring, bring it to everyone we meet, uh, bring it everywhere we go, and, and bring it not only uh, wherever we go, but bring it to an, a, a serious a spiritual growth within us. Uh, and this is what the challenge uh, calls us to achieve, is to become really a spiritual, really strong, really of God, really good, and these words and this type of conversation is not very popular, not even in the church today, because we live uh, the church of mercy, the church of political correctness, the church of, of re human respect, and we don't live the church of the fear of God. Obviously, there are good people and faithful Catholics everywhere. Thank God. God always keeps his remnant but we can see the need that we have to be a true testimony within the church where we are, where God called us. Like St. Paul says, stay where God called you. And, and our parishes are a nest uh, of our mission. Our parishes are the place where God calls us to strengthen us, to fortify us through a sacramental life, a life of prayer, a life of community, a life of gathering to strengthen our souls and go out there in the world to face uh, the battle we have against materialism, consumism, relativism, and so many isms that lead us to the abysm. And this is our daily fight. And we all know, as parents, you know all the... Uh, battles you have to keep your children safe from the world and also the horror of what they are being talked out there the dangers we have with most everything we use today all the technology and a lot of the things we have which are extraordinary progress for up for all of us is also used by evil and we have to have such a clear discernment as to how to navigate our daily life, how to defend our people, how to protect ourselves from being perverted and contaminated by all the evils of this world. And it's not like we have to live paranoid and live in a negative sense our lives because we have been given a spirit of strength, 
a spirit of peace and hope and, and we are supposed to be a people of God that are joyful and hopeful but we need to understand that the, we live in a dark world and we have to be very strong to be good. We have to be very strong to be people of God because everything in this world is against us related to goodness and evil. You see, it's very easy to be of the world and to be pleasing people and adapt yourself to what the world wants to hear from you and wants from you. That is the easiest way to go. But it's not easy to testify the truth, to be a real Christian, to be of God wherever you are, wherever, whatever you do and with whomever you meet. And this is the big battle. And then the scriptures tell us very clearly what Jesus wants from us. He says, if you testify in my behalf before men, I will testify for you before my Father and my angels. And we have to remember that testifying in God's behalf is not only preaching the word, it's not only speaking about God, it's being of God in every way possible. It's like uh, sometimes we are uh, presenting God to others just by blessing our food in a restaurant in a public place. And sometimes little things like that uh, bring God to people. And uh, there are little actions, like they say, the devil is in the details, but even more so, God. See, we, um, we act in this world according to who we carry inside us. Like St. John the Evangelist says, make sure you know which spirit is in that person, because we have to know that there are only two spirits, the spirit of good and the spirit of evil. And uh, no, there is nothing else. So we have to know who we're talking to. And we cannot deceive ourselves. Because sometimes even us become instruments of the dark when we um, uh, allow pessimism and uh, the darkness of this world to manifest through us in a conversation in many different ways. You remember St. Peter being such a good apostle, being so faithful to Jesus, and one time he was weak, telling Jesus not to let himself be crucified. And you remember what Jesus told Peter. He said, behind me, Satan. And he wasn't calling Peter Satan. He was exhorting the spirit that spoke through Peter. He said, you speak like a man. Uh, and and uh, this is so important for us to discern and to understand that we could also be instruments of voices that are not necessarily the voices of God, just because we are weak in a given moment. And uh, sometimes for convenience, for avoiding pain for avoiding circumstances in our life that are negative or not in our advantage. We speak through uh, with uh, a spirit that is not necessarily of the light because of selfishness, because of whatever leads us into self-love and our self-interest. So we have to be very disciplined with this because we are responsible for the spiritual life we live. <clears throat> and if we allow the spirit of the world <clears throat> to work through us, this is against us. And we, we know, and we've been told that <clears throat> everything we do in this life is written in the book of life. We <clears throat> do have an amazing blessing as Catholics, and it is the sacrament of confession. We know that Jesus gave us this incredible gift of the sacrament of confession for us to be able to stay in a friendship with God as we travel along through this exile because he knows that we are weak. He knows that we are not going to win all the battles of temptations. He knows that uh, many times we're going to fall because we are not going to be strong enough to go for what is good to go for God. <clears throat> so we have this amazing opportunity to rewrite 
our book of life by confession. So still, we need to be so vigilant and alert about the way we handle the sacraments because even confession has to be treated spiritually and not simply religiously because you may get used to to go to confession just to make peace with with God and to have peace in your mind and your conscience but not to change your heart and you know you're going to go back to that same sin voluntarily so you don't have a true act of contrition and that confession is not really serving the 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 mission of the of the sacrament which is to keep you in the friendship with God and bring you back into the graces you receive in baptism and keep you uh, strong against temptations and against the devil but for that you need to really understand repentance you you need to understand true contrition and you need to understand sincerity to be sincere to God and sincere to yourself to un- to know that you truly mean to repent when you confess and this is what keeps us going and keeping the book of our lives uh, straight with God because we don't have time we we have to understand that uh, uh, time is not on our side uh, because we don't know how much time we have so if we don't know how much time we have then time is against us really in and when we speak about a spirituality we need to fulfill the mission we were born to fulfill and uh, this mission we were born to fulfill <clears throat> is very clear we don't have to go anywhere to look for for what it is because it has been given to us in baptism the lord chose us for being uh, he enlisted us in an army his army and he sent us through the sacrament of confirmation he sent us to take this good news of the gospel everywhere we go and to leave those news of the gospel in our personal life to be christ like to be part of this gift everywhere we go you see sometimes we read the lives of saints like saint teresa of lisieux Saint Teresa of the Little Flower. And you see this nun that only lived 24 years. She was always in a convent most of her life, but still she's a giant apostle. She's everywhere around the world in the Catholic Church, and she never left that convent. But you notice how big her life was spiritually, that she permeated the whole church. And so are many saints that... uh, being a small, little, humble, like nothingness in a little convent somewhere. They died and later on everybody knew them. Everybody found out about them. And it's just because they were so alive in God. They became so real. And, and that shows you how the light that comes from heaven and lands on us through baptism and the spirit that we carry is real. It's true. It's not something that we read and it's not something given to just a, a couple and a, and a, a handful of holy people, the saints. It's given to all of us and it's accessible to all of us. And we all carry this treasure. We all carry the Holy Spirit and holiness is at hand. Holiness is absolutely possible. Holiness is a decision. We have to take this decision of being good and being of God, and it's a decision that has to be personal. We, no one can take that decision for us. We, each one of us, has to decide to be good or to be bad. And this is a personal decision that marks our lives. But God has given us everything it takes to be good, everything it takes to make it to heaven, to make it home. And the only will of God is our sanctification. And we have to understand that the best gift we can bring to humanity, when we are concerned about the family that is away from God, friends, people we know, uh, you ask the question of what can I do? 
What kind of prayers? What should I do to make sure they are saved? And the only answer to that is the biggest contribution is your holiness. You see, because like St. Paul says, Paul planted an Apollo water, but only God can make it grow. So we are not able to change anybody's heart, but we are able to plant the seeds, to water them anytime we can, and this is our job. If we do that, God will do the rest. So the best contribution that we can actually do and give is our sanctity, our holiness. If you, if you worry so much about everybody else, if you want people to be saved, if you want everybody to convert, if you want people to be of God, then you be of God, then you convert, then you be holy. And this is the biggest contribution. There is nothing else because there are no magical prayers to change anybody's heart. There is no magical prayers to get what we want. No, we are of God and God is who decides what is it that is the best for us. And uh, we know his will is not always in our convenience as far as what we want to get and the, the way we decide to live our lives. Mo a lot of the times God's will is very contradictory to our will. And this is something difficult to manage because our, our will, our human will has a plan, an agenda, an idea, a desire, a want. But God has another one because God's plans are always for our salvation, our eternal salvation. And many times our plans, though they may look good, they may look uh, something that is common sense for us, still they, they are not going to be good for us and God knows it. And that's why he will not grant us the prayers the way we present them to him. And this is a need, an immense need to trust in the Lord. When we, um, when we find this amazing message of divine mercy with St. Faustina Kowalska, we understand that the urgency of Jesus is to tell us to trust in him. And when you look at that and you, and you meditate about that and see why is Jesus telling us with so much urgency to trust in him. And, uh, and he's promising that if we trust in him, he will take care of the rest. Just trust in me, trust in my mercy. And, and this is deep and this is huge, but it's so simple. And that's why we see how God manifests in such simple ways and many people overlook his grandiosity because of his little ways, because of his littleness. And when you read the, the gospel, many times great miracles were done by little actions, little requests of God, go and do this, go and bathe in the pool, go and do that. And little things that were insignificant and absurd, and they were the, the, the means and the instruments of great miracles. And this is the way God works in our lives. Sometimes what is absurd in our lives turn out to be the best. And we can tell by looking back in everybody's life that many things we despise, many things we thought was the most terrible thing in our lives end up being a blessing, ended up being a grace, ended up being the best thing for us. Even though it might have been painful when it took place. It's like my experience when I was kidnapped by the rebels in Colombia and they stole everything I had because that's why they kidnapped me for a ransom. So all my colleagues in California, they thought what happened to me was the most horrifying thing in the world, you see? But when I will tell them that what happened to me was the best thing that could ever happen to me, they thought I lost it. I'm really ill, I need help, right? Because people in a natural state will never understand that I could be thankful to God for being kidnapped, for, for losing everything I had, 
for being tortured for six months. Nobody will ever understand that I will praise God and thank God for that. Because you have to go through this and understand faith and understand our spiritual nature and the graces of God to know how God works in our lives. And today I know, I look back and I know that the best thing that happened to me in my life was the kidnapping. And, and I, it was the most horrifying experience. But, but today I can testify that it was the best. So these absurdities sometimes is what teaches us that we should never be, be confused by the events of this world. Because things that look so horrible sometimes are good for us. And it's not like I'm saying that only horrible things are going to produce good fruits. That's not what I'm trying to say. But what I'm saying is I experienced in my life a very difficult uh, situation where everybody will think is the most horrible thing that could happen to a human being. And then when I come out of that, I look back and I say, it's the best thing that can happen to a human being. Because if God rescued you from the world, from sin, from eternal damnation, he rescued you from the worst. So regardless of what you had to go through, if, if God saved your soul, there couldn't be a better thing to happen than the rescuing of your soul. And this is important. So, like now, many times people live in mortal sin, like living common law without getting married, and uh, they don't live at peace with God, and uh, in order for them to get back to uh, the faith and be faithful to God, they have to do things that are very difficult. They have to let go of attachments and things that are very difficult. But once they do that, they gain, they gain the freedom of their souls and maybe they lose a lot of things in this material world and they probably lose something so comfortable like human affection and the care of other persons that are around us. But when you go for the truth, it doesn't matter how you are left. You, the most important is that you are at peace with God, that you have peace with the Lord, that you can die and be at peace and ready to face the Lord. This is the most important thing in our lives, to be prepared, regardless of what we have to sacrifice. But it's not easy to take this, this uh, leap, this quantum leap, because it is jumping into the abyss of God and letting go and letting God. And this is a brave move that we all have to take because when we really know that we have to sacrifice whatever we have to sacrifice to be faithful to the Lord, then we understand the truth. I, I always give an example that is very practical and direct. And it is Jesus telling us what to do regarding sin. And he says, if this eye make you sin, take it out. If this arm make you sin, cut it off. And you know, this is absolutely radical. And it's not just metaphoric, it's the truth. He means it. He's telling us like it is. He's saying it's better to enter the kingdom of God with one eye or one arm than to have the whole body in going to the pits, going to hell. So this has to be clear. Sometimes we have to sacrifice big time uh, in order to be faithful to God. And sometimes we have to give up things that are important to us in this world, in this life, in order to gain the friendship with God, in order to be at peace with God. And it should be the most important thing for us in our lives to be at peace with God. I tell people, look, a faithful husband doesn't have to make any effort to be faithful to the wife. Doesn't even think about it. He's faithful. It's just something natural. It's, it's faithful. And wherever this husband goes, always the wife is in his heart. The family is in his heart. And this is the relationship we should have with God. We should 
not have any effort to love God and to obey God. And wherever we are, God should be in our hearts because it's a great marriage, the marriage we have with the soul and God and the spirit. And it should be easy. That's why Jesus says, my commandments are easy. My yoke is light. And he, he's talking about love. When we truly love, we don't have to make any effort to be faithful. We are naturally faithful. And this is important. So when we understand holiness, the call to holiness, we understand that it should be easy. It should be easy. If we become sincere, if we become real in the love of God, then it's easy. Then it's light. Then we can do it every day, all the time. And uh, look what keeps us from growing into the light, from being of the light, from being of God 100%. Self. We have a little um, idea about things. We have attachments to many things. We have want and desire that separates us from God. And we have a hard time stopping it, letting it go, changing it, and becoming better, becoming better people. We all have things to change, each one of us. We have to get uh, to the point where we need to confront ourselves with our weaknesses and change our ways and become better people. I tell people sometimes, look, if you want to do a true examination of conscience, look back one year and uh, find out if today you are a better person than you were a year ago. If you are not a better person today than you were a year ago, then you are not walking straight into God. You are stuck. You are being part of this world. You are drowned in materialism. You are drowned in self. You are not progressing. You are not walking home because our time is limited. Our time is going to be up any time. So we may as well be working on the edifice of faith, building this building of faith, of spirituality, of goodness, of holiness. This is a construction. And we have to lay every brick, every, every, every brick of this building and make sure we lay down well a, a solid construction. And it's a construction of deeds, of good deeds, a, a construction of changing the heart really changing the heart and becoming better. There are so many bad things that we have in our lives, in our hearts, that we have to change. A lot of people justify the weaknesses they have because they say, we are all like this in my family. We all have a short temper. We are all like this. And they kind of uh, think it's almost like a virtue, right? We are all of short temper in the family. So was grandpa, so was grandma. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, when you become sincere and you know what the gospel is teaching us and what Jesus wants from us, oh no, we are not to be comfortable with the things everybody does that are not good. You see, if, if everyone at home is of a short temper, you should change and you should stop it and you should grow and you should transform your heart and you should convert and, and someone has to do it and you take the lead and this is the things we have to do to become better, to become better people, be better persons and it becomes a, a work, you know, it's like a workshop. You do with your soul, with your heart, with your whole being. You, you, you look at yourself and you be meticulous. You look at every spot that has to be changed and you begin to change it. And you begin to fight with it because it doesn't happen overnight. It's a hard work. But this is what we need to do because God called us to be good and he gave us everything it takes for us to truly become good. I'm going to end with the reading from the letters of the letter of of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 12 from verse 9 on, marks of the true Christian. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with brotherly affection, 
outdo one another in showing honor, never flag in zeal, be aglow with the Spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in your hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, practice hospitality, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly, never be consited, repay no one evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends upon you, live peaceably, peace, peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink, for by so doing you will heap burning coals upon his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. So I praise God for all of us, and I praise God for these parties, uh, for the Paris priests, for your families, for our battles. Uh, only God knows what we carry in our hearts. May God bless what you carry in your hearts. May God grant you the greatest gift of all, which is to be brave, to be brave, to be good, to be good, to be holy, and to be able to make it home. We are all called to be in heaven. And praise God that he gave us the opportunity to, to get there if we follow him, if we obey him, if we become as good as we need to become. Amen.